Hello students, welcome to the EPG Partshala. Today in this module, I shall discuss the methods of sampling of aerosol, air and water pollutants. We shall deal with the types of sampling, the methods of sampling of both aerosol, air that is the gas phase pollutants and the methods for sampling of water pollutants. Sampling of air and water, it is a systematic long term measurement of atmospheric pollutants and water contaminants and generally it is done in specific locations. For the monitoring results to be significant, it is essential that we have the correct choice of the samples and the sampling methods. The primary reasons for sampling and analysis are to determine the concentration of pollutants so that we can determine the effects of pollutants on quality of life and also assess the long term trends of pollutants. The components of air and water pollution monitoring system usually include collection or sampling of the pollutants both from the ambient air, water and from specific sources and this is followed by the analysis or measurement of the pollutant concentrations and finally, the reporting and use of the information collected. Now, there are certain considerations which have to be taken care before sampling. The sample which we collect must be representative in terms of time, location and conditions to be studied. The sample must be large enough for accurate analysis. The rate of sampling must be such as so that it provides maximum efficiency of collection and the duration of sampling must accurately reflect the fluctuations in pollution levels that is whether the sample duration is 1 hourly, 4 hourly, 6 hourly, 8 hourly or 24 hourly. However, continuous sampling is preferred. Sampling may be passive in nature, dynamic or it may be continuous in nature. In passive sampling, pollutants are collected by devices that have no moving parts. Dynamic sampling involves grab sampling and intermittent sampling. In grab sampling, a small volume of polluted air is collected in a period of seconds to minutes. This refers to sampling of air pollutants and in intermittent sampling of air pollutants, air is collected for a distinct interval over which the concentration is integrated. While continuous in sampling involves real time data that is collected continuously. Now, I shall first discuss the air sampling methods and then the water sampling methods. Now, amongst the air sampling methods, the sampling methods include both collection of gaseous samples and collection of particulate samples. Collection of gaseous samples involves principles of adsorption, absorption, condensation and grab sampling, whereas collection of particulate samples involves the principles of filtration impingement and sedimentation. Now, before sampling it is very essential that we select the location from which the sample has to be collected. So, sampling locations are, are in general governed by factors like the objectives of the sampling, method of sampling and the resources available. If the objectives are health effects, then the sampler is usually located at breathing level in the population centers or in hospitals or schools. If the effect is to study on the vegetation, then sampling is performed at foliage level. If we are interested in knowing the background concentration, then the samplers are located away from the sources of pollution. And if we are intended to know the effect on buildings or monuments, then sampling is performed on rooftops. Now, in order to measure the aerosol physical properties this may be performed using integral measurements or number concentration or determination of the concentration of very fine uh, aerosol particles which are referred to as cloud condensation nuclei. In integral measurements usually cloud nucleus ca uh, counters are used which measure the total number of particles that are larger than a minimum size and these cloud condensation nuclei counters they measure a subset of the particles. While filter samplers are also employed, they measure the total mass concentrations which are integrated with respect to both size and time. For number concentration that is how many, what is the number of particles present in the air, the condensation nucleus counters are usually employed which measure the total aerosol number concentration 
and this is important with respect to the particulate health effects that are sensitive to number concentration than to mass. Cloud condensation nuclei counters measure the concentration of particles that are converted to cloud droplets by condensation of water and this depends on both the aerosol size distribution and the aerosol composition. Aerosol chemical composition is also of interest, so measurements are also done on aerosol chemical composition both for particulates and gas phase. Particulate monitoring is usually done by manual measurements and laboratory analysis and particulate matter measurement uses the principles of gravimetry wherein a filter based high volume sampler retains the atmospheric pollutants for further laboratory weighing and chemical analysis on a filter. And the chemical analysis that may be performed may be done through techniques like atomic absorption spectrometry used for metal analysis, atomic force spectrometry, inductively coupled plasma spectroscopy, X-ray fluorescence spectroscopy, ion chromatography and through carbon analyzers to determine the organic and elemental carbon present in aerosols. Now, the aerosols they are usually determined by three parameters which include their chemical composition, mass concentration and size characteristics. So, filter sampling is usually performed and this is ca capable of capturing the aerosol particles by filters wherein the air sample is aspirated through one or more op openings in the solid casing of the filter holder and a wide spectrum of filters are available and these filters are classified on the basis of their structure. They may be fibrous, porous, nuclear pore filters or granular bed filters and membrane filters are also employed. These in include mixed cellulose, ester filters, teflon filters and polyvinyl chloride. Which filter has to be used it depends on the analyte of interest and uh, filter cassettes are also available of different diameters like 37 millimeters and 47 millimeters. Now, aerosol sampling is usually performed through high volume samplers. The mechanism of particulate collection onto the filter which acts as the substrate is diffusion, interception, inertial impaction, gravitational settling and electrostatic attraction. The high volume sampler has several advantages that is it possesses high flow rate and a low pressure drop. Uh, it has a high particulate storage capacity, there is no moisture regain, it has high collection efficiency comparatively low cost and there is no appreciable increase in air flow resistance. The filter is almost 99 percent efficient and collect particles as fine as 0.3 micrometers and absorption principle is 99 percent efficient in collecting the gases. Then we have inertial and gravitational collectors to sample the particulate matter. These include impactors, cyclones, aerosol centrifuges and impingers. Cascade impactors are used for size selective segregated sampling of airborne particles depending on their aerodynamic diameter of the particle. Then each stage of the cascade impactor can be analyzed to determine the aerosol mass distributions and to assess the chemical composition of the particles as a function of particle size. Then cyclones can be employed as single stage impactors, they are used as a pre-cut for size selective sampling followed by a filter for aerosol collection. The impactors they collect particles according to their aerodynamic diameters this is shown a cascade impactor and in cascade impactors air passes from one stage to the next to remove particles in discrete size ranges. Each impactor stage consists of one or more jets followed by a collection plate and successive stages are designed to collect smaller particles. The size collected depends on the jet diameter and the air stream velocity in the jet as well as distance to the impaction surface. However, it suffers from a major limitation that is particle bounce off and re entrainment of particles on the deposit. Then cyclones, these are size selective samplers used to define respirable particle criteria and the removal by cyclone mimics the respiratory system when it is operated. Flow rate is critical while operating cyclones. The cyclones, they use centrifugal forces for particle collection and utilize a vertical flow inside a cylindrical or conical chamber as shown in the figure. 
particles with sufficient inertia are unable to follow the air streamlines and they impact onto the cyclone walls. These particles are either retained on the cyclone walls or they migrate to the bottom of the cyclone cone where they are collected. The advantages of cyclones are that they offer large capacity for loading, they are insensitive to the orientation, they are low cost, easy to operate, there is no particle bounce off and re-entrainment and they do not require special collecting surfaces as in high volume samplers. Then impingers and elutriators are other sampling devices usually used for gas phase sampling. The sampled air is usually flown through a collecting or absorbing medium which could be water or any chemical and the sampled air is accelerated to velocities of 60 meters per second or greater and they are effective for the collection of particles in the 1 micrometer to 20 micrometer size range. The elutriators they use gravitational settling in a laminar flow to separate particles by their aerodynamic diameter. Two types of elutriators are in common use vertical and horizontal. In a vertical elutriator a vertical duct through which air flows slowly upward is used. Then we also have real time measurement techniques where sampling and ana analysis are carried out within the instrument almost immediately and it can be used to obtain information regarding the number concentration, mass concentration, opacity and size distribution as well and it can also give us information regarding the constituents of aerosol say PM 2.5, the anions, the cations and the associated precursor gases which can easily be measured through an ambient ion monitor and an ion chromatograph. Now these continuous near real time early online measurement of water soluble inorganic constituents of PM 2.5 and precursor gases is done at various places using such real time monitors. For gas sampling the sampling can be conducted by collecting the sample at the site and analyzing in the laboratory. So, we may have gas samplers or it can be done through online analyzers where there is a direct reading instrument which samples a known volume of air, performs the analysis immediately and displays the results visually. Now, the types of samples which are usually collected they are grab samples, composite samples or integrated samples. Grab samples are single samples collected at a specific spot at a site over a short period of time. Composite samples provide a more representative sampling of the heterogeneous matrix in which the concentration of the analyte of interest may vary over short periods of time and space. Integrated samples are however a mixture of grab samples collected from different points simultaneously or nearly so as possible. The advantages of composite sampling is that the costs are reduced for analyzing a large number of samples. Samples are more representative of heterogeneous matrices, they include larger sample sizes when amount of test samples are limited. Although it also has certain disadvantages which include loss of analyte relationships in the individual samples, then dilution of analytes below detection limits increased potential of analytical interferences and possibility of analyte interactions. The gas sampling devices involve Teflon bags and canisters, evacuated flask, bottle, syringes or they may involve gas liquid displacement containers. These are the adsorption tubes and impingers. Integrated sampling may be employed by passing a known volume of air through an absorbing or adsorbing media to remove the contaminant from the air stream. So, for this impingers or adsorption tubes are used and the sampling period may vary from duration of less than an hour to 8 hours and these collected samples can be analyzed over to assess average or long term exposure levels. Now, there are with respect to sampling of water there are certain considerations and the first is that what is the monitoring plan, uh, it has to be clearly identified. So, the objectives of the monitoring plan should be known. So, for water and wastewater monitoring can be taken to uh, gain understanding of the aquatic ecosystem and the physical, chemical and biological processes that operate within it. 
or it may be performed to review the water quality within specified criteria. Now, sampling of water is important to consider the number of sites, the number of replicates and the frequency and the amount of sample to be collected. Samples should be collected from sites and times that provide a representative sample which is free from contamination and should not undergo decomposition. The sampling sites should be located in safe and accessible areas. It should be well mixed and homogeneous and be easily identified for later sampling and comparable over time. Now, for sampling of water we have to consider what type of container has to be used and before analysis it has to be preserved. So, what are the preservation choices? So, care must be taken to ensure that sample container and the collecting equipment do not contaminate the samples. Contamination may occur by leaching of contaminants from surface of containers, leaching of organic substances from the plastic or glass container which is used adsorption of metals onto surfaces of containers, reaction of the sample with container material and alteration due to change in equilibrium between pollutants in the particulate and solution phases of the sample. Plastic material is typically used, glass like hard glass that is pyrex is usually recommended for collection of samples if the analyte of interest is an organic compound. Amber glass is recommended for light sensitive compounds. Usually 1 liter sample is necessary for most analysis. However, some determinations require preservation prior to analysis. If the sample is to be subjected to an extraction technique, then extraction reagents are employed and these extraction reagents must be specifically clean. Now, this table gives the summary of the sampling methods the container which can be used, the preservation methods, the analytical methods and the permissible levels for these parameters. Like for if you are interested in pH measurement, the container should be either of plastic or glass. Sample preservation is done through refrigeration method is using and employing a pH meter, normal limits are 6.5 to 8.5. And for color, electrical conductance, alkalinity, turbidity, plastic or glass containers are sufficient and color can be measured through visual or spectrophotometry, conductance through conductivity meter, alkalinity through titration involving a pH metric titration, turbidity is measured through nephlometry and the permissible limits are evident in the table. Then uh, dissolved oxygen, biochemical oxygen demand, chemical oxygen demand, nitrate, nitrite, ammonia, organics. If these are the analytes of interest, plastic and glass material is used for collection of samples. Preservation methods include either refrigeration, storage in dark for DO and BOD, acidification and refrigeration for chemical oxygen demand. For parameters like nitrite, nitrate, ammonia and organic, the sample is refrigerated. Then the methods for DO and BOD, Winkler's method is usually employed. Chemical oxygen demand can be determined by titrimetric analysis. For nitrite, nitrate, ion selective or calorimetric methods are used. Ammonia, calorimetric methods and ion selective methods are used. Organics can be done by Zeldahl methods. Then for anions like fluoride, chloride, sulphate, cyanide again uh, plastic or glass material can be used. Cyanide it is preferable to use amber glass. Preservation methods is to refrigerate the samples. Then fluoride can be measured by ion selective methods or the colorimetric methods called as PANS. Chloride by argentometric methods, sulphate by turbidimetry, cyanide again by ion selective methods. Similarly, these are the uh, conditions under which metals copper, iron, mercury, arsenic, chromium, the respective containers which can be used, the methods usually metals are analyzed by AS or ICP and for metals like mercury we usually employ the cold vapor technique, arsenic, chromium, hydride method is preferred. Then uh, in water samples, we may be interested in determining the detergent levels, anionic detergents, hydrocarbons, oil and grease, pesticides, phenolic compounds. The so, sampling containers again are specific to the analyte of interest. The method of preservation is 
specific and methods like colorimetry, gas chromatography, these are usually employed for analysis of these samples. Sampling is done at the site, analysis is done usually in the laboratory. So, there may be some degradation during the transportation of sample. So, this table gives a summary of what are the problems and how they can be remediated. So, certain cations are subject to loss by adsorption on or ion exchange with the walls of the glass containers. Especially, this is for aluminum, cadmium, chromium, copper, iron, lead, manganese, silver, and zinc. So, the remedy is that sample should be collected in separate clean bottle acidified with nitric acid to low pH usually below 2. So, that it minimizes precipitation adsorption on the container walls. Similarly, changes in the pH alkalinity or carbon dioxide content may cause calcium carbonate to precipitate and decrease the values of calcium and total hardness present in any samples. So, this such samples can be preserved by adding nitric acid so that the pH is lowered and precipitation is prevented. Biological activity may take place and this may result in change in oxidation state of some of the constituents. So, this can be retarded by storing the sample at low temperatures usually less than 4 degrees centigrade. So, we see that it is very important to adhere to the principles of sampling in order to sample and this depends on the interested analytes, the method to be adopted, then it is also essential that we know the detection limits of our methods. So, that the appropriate method is employed to detect the analyte of interest. So, that we do not overestimate or underestimate the levels. As we know that control methods can only be applied when once we know the levels present in the environment. These are some of the books through which you can refer for the sampling methods. Thank you.